Michael Brent, Saturday Night on the South. So this is the first season in a couple years that Ole Miss is uh, eligible to go to the postseason. Can you sense that in the locker room? I mean, does that give you guys uh, just more focus heading into the year? Uh, yes, it does. Everybody's more focused, more uh, excited for the season, you know. Uh, it's always exciting playing for that bowl game. That's what everybody strives for at the end of the season. Um, so, you know, we're, shoot, we're shooting to uh, maybe see a, a New Year's Six. We're, we're shooting for the stars, you know, trying to do the best we can. To your left on the second row. How do you like that? How is the defense to it? What are some of the biggest changes for you? Uh, I love the 3-4 defense. Uh, Coach McIntyre has done a good job of simplifying the defense and so we can have a foundation that we can build upon in our knowledge. Um, we, have the, we have the defensive personnel for the 3-4. Uh, a lot of guys that were playing defensive end before that are better fit to be stand-up outside linebackers. Uh, so it's a good situation for them too. And um, the biggest change I would say is um, the gap, the, there's no, you don't have a gap. You know, it's not like I have the A gap on this play. I know I got to be there. It's more, you got to follow the ebb and flow of the game and see, fit where you need to. And uh, also with those guards uncovered, uh, there's more guys that can come down, come down to you immediately. But um, that's with those outside linebackers. If they have a strong presence in the run game, you can't block down like that. You have to block it like a bare front. Right here in the middle, third row. A lot of us were surprised when, um, when we heard that, that a redshirt freshman quarterback, uh, Matt Corral, was going to be here. Were you guys surprised that he was getting brought to media days? And tell us a little bit about him. We don't know too much about him. Not at all. If you want to know about Matt, uh, you just got to know he's a competitor, man. Uh, he, he's a redshirt freshman, but he did get some snaps last year. We didn't play the full four games, so he got his redshirt. But the snaps he did get, the team noticed, the fans noticed, and we were excited about him long before the season ended. We were excited for next year. And uh, he's, he's a great guy. He's smart. He's competitive. He's got a fire about him. Uh, he, he's got a cannon for an arm. And we're, we're, we're excited about him and where he goes. Okay, right down here in the middle. Your former defensive coordinator, Coach McGriff, is now on the staff over at Auburn. Are you looking forward to that game coming up this year to kind of get to see him again and what kind of, you know, move on from that regime? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to playing Auburn. Uh, Auburn's always a, a tough physical game. He's a, he's a great coach. No knock on him. Um, the the four two five is not for every team. You know, uh, you say in the NFL, some guys are great in the NFL and they go to a team with a different scheme and they don't fit it. Our defense didn't fit his scheme. That doesn't mean anything's wrong with his scheme or his coaching. But he's a great coach, great guy. I'm looking forward to seeing him again when we play him. To your left over here, third row. AJ Spurn, 90.7, WVUA FM, Tuscaloosa. It, it seems like we just keep talking about how young this Ole Miss team will be uh, in the 2019 season. Who has really stepped up to be a leader on and off the field for the Rebels? Um, one of the biggest leaders on defense is a guy you wouldn't think would be is Charles Wiley, Chuck Wiley, uh, outside linebacker. Right now he's uh, backing up, uh, backing up Sam. But but man, that kid is he's a hard he's a hard worker day in day out. And it's it's guys like that that are stepping up, like guys that just are hard workers and guys that have respect from the team because everybody knows that every day they walk in that that guy's gonna work hard and that guy's gonna give his best and that guy's gonna show up mentally, physically, everything. To your right. Hey, Mackenzie Salmon from the Clarion Ledger. Going back to you being one of the older guys on the team, what kind of advice have you been giving the younger guys coming into the season? Because a lot of them are going to have to step up and take those roles. Uh, I've been trying to tell the guys that, you know, the time your time comes quick. People tell you four years, but four years goes by very fast. I'm already a junior. I feel like I just got on campus. So um, just take advantage of every moment in the weight room, stay after, get a little extra work, come up on your off days, get a little extra work, because you can always get better. There's always opportunity to get better. If you're not getting better, you're getting worse. That's what Coach Luke tells us all the time. So I really try to make sure they buy into that, buy into our program and our system, and are prepared. In the middle of the camera bank. You spoke already a little bit about Auburn, but I believe you have to make the trip both to Auburn and Alabama this year in the West. Uh, those two road games, both West games, I mean, 
when you look at that on your schedule, uh, what, what, what challenges does that present playing to those two schools? I mean, obviously it's challenging. Those are two great teams, but I, I can't help but get excited. Who can't? That's, that's what I came to the SEC for, to play Auburn, Alabama, LSU, a and uh, to play everybody in the SEC. Everybody in the SEC is a good, to, a good contender and plays hard, and it's the, the league is only second to the NFL. So you can't, like, you can't really complain. This is what you came here for, and we came to play on that stage, going and playing in their house and trying to take a win from them. And so we're excited about it. Everybody is. Back to you, right Ian. Clear and Ledger. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, obviously, with the new defense coming in this season, what expectations do you have for yourself or what goals are you trying to set? Uh, I'm just trying to become a more complete all-around linebacker, especially especially on the mental side. I'm trying to be uh, like looking up to those guys I admire in the NFL, like Sean Lee, Luke Keekley, Ray Lewis, those guys that just know where the ball's going before the play even starts. They, they, they. You can, you can, you can ask other NFL players. They, they say that about those guys that they know what's coming. They know what to expect every single play. Sometimes they even call out the play out loud. They'll call it out, then run straight to it and make the play, because those guys are so prepared mentally and they have such a profound understanding of the game. So I'm trying to model that. I guess model after that and then be like that. But that, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. To your left. Hey, how you doing, Jacques Doucet, WAFB TV, Baton Rouge. Uh, if you can, share some thoughts about the LSU game. You're playing that in November this year, kind of more of a traditional time. You played like late September last year. Your thoughts of having those guys come over to Oxford this year? I'm excited about it. It was a really good game down in Death Valley. Uh, I, I loved playing there. That was, a, that was really cool. The fans were crazy. Um, but no, I'm, I'm very excited about that. It's a strong team. It's always a strong team and to run the ball. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get them in our house and tussle with them under our roof. To your right, standing up. Joe Bombo, SB Nation Radio. Could you just talk about how frustrating it was during the spring dealing with that wrist injury? Uh, yeah, it was, it was frustrating. Uh, I tore the scalp Fort lunate ligament in my wrist during the season last year, and I had surgery in January. Um, Late January, I had about a month to to recover to start spring football. I had to play in a club. Um, it, it was just real frustrating because to play linebacker, you need to take on blocks with both hands. Um, but I knew I had no excuse. You know, I just yeah, I'm out of surgery, but I can I can play in a club. I can play in a cast, whatever I need to play in. I need to get better every day. If I'm not getting better, I'm getting worse. So I just, yeah, I struggled with mentally like thinking uh, why well, I'm not getting as good as I should be. But at the end of the day, everybody has to deal with injuries. I know one of our great guys, Jalen Jones, he had to deal with that this season with a recent ACL injury. And uh, but to see him fight through that, that gave me fight too, you know? And uh, I just tried to make the best of the situation. And is there anything that you took from that moment or just helped you grow in your game in other ways? Um, it just helped me grow in my game to know that like there, there's there's not much that can hold me back. You know, I'm gonna fight through every every situation that comes in front of me, and be prepared as prepared as I can be. We have again on the right. I don't know if you've seen this or if you care or, but Memphis is a favorite to beat Ole Miss. Does that provide any extra motivation for you and your teammates to open the season and just prove your doubters wrong? It does, you know, coach, coach has actually put up an article talking about that, talking about how they're favored and, you know, Memphis is favored to have an undefeated season this year and we're, we're looking to go in that talk in the first game of the season. Uh, Memphis is a great team, you know, number, I, I believe they were number five scoring offense last year, a great scoring offense, they know how to put up points and that's a good first test for our defense going and stopping that and giving our offense the opportunity to go win us the game. Yeah, I put the ball in Matt's hands. I know Matt will take care of it. So um, it, it's just a, a great opportunity to start the season that way uh, with, a, with, a, with a way to answer some of those questions uh, right off the bat that we're coming to play. Okay, back to the right. How much confidence does it give you to play behind a guy like Benito Jones? 
Oh, a lot of confidence. We got we got some dogs up front, you know, with Benito Jones, Josiah Cooley, Tyreek, Josiah Coney, Tyreek Tisdale. All those guys up front are are big, strong guys that that have played the game before. You know, they're 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 going on their senior, junior years. They're they're experienced, so uh, it it gives me a lot of confidence to know that those guys might get might get get to the play in the backfield before I even got the chance to make anything happen. Which, I mean, that would lower your stats, but that makes me happy though. Knowing, seeing my team succeed like that. So it, it's, it's a lot of confidence playing behind those guys.